Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to make a bevel bottle opener. Check it out here. We can put a penny in this here and put it on our keychain. Let's get to beveling. First thing we're going to do is do a new general project. And if this is your first time opening up Blender today, shame on you. Why haven't you been designing all day? Just kidding. We are in 2.9 and let's just do general. And before we get started, let's just go ahead and practice smart designing and do save as. And I'm just going to call this Bevel. And let's go ahead and switch into Eevee just so it looks nice and colorful. And we are going to use the Bevel modifier. So say if we added the Bevel modifier to Suzanne, you know, we could bevel out the edges. It's kind of hard to see, but, you know, it's beveling out just the tiny edges. And I could go through and, you know, bring in a generic cube just like every other bevel tutorial on the planet and show you how to use the bevel uh, but we're not going to do that we're actually going to make something functional and cool but just so you know if you're someone who just needs to know right away like me <laughs> all you have to do is take an object add the modifier bevel and then you're done uh, but really all it's doing is adding a little bitty uh, kind of like soft edges or making them less uh, sharp on the edges so if we increase, you can kind of see what's going on here. You can also increase the segments. And nothing in real life or in the real world is like a perfect sharp edge like this. You know, it's just, it's just not, it just doesn't happen. So it's a good practice just to throw bevels on um, a lot of your designs. It also makes it look a little bit better. So, um, you know, there's all different types. You can do offsets. You can do, uh, you know, bevel with the width. So let's just set the amount to something like, maybe five millimeters. And I'll show you the difference between these different width types before we dive too deep. We're gonna go over all these different uh, drop downs today, but real quick, in a nutshell, what the bevel modifier is doing is just rounding out the corners and you can do it with different types. And a good visual representation to show you kind of the difference here is, uh, you know, we've got offset, width, depth, percent, and absolute. But for these first few, I wanna show you this photograph. So this is essentially what Blender is doing whenever you change the little drop down here. So if this is our original, you know, corner of our cube, if we do offset, it's going to do five millimeters from that point to the bevel off, you know, the offset of the bevel. Or if you put it on width, it's going to make the actual bevel itself, you know, the actual distance of the bevel five millimeters. Or if you use depth, it's going to take from the original corner and then just make a perpendicular line of five millimeters uh, to where the bevel lands. So that's the difference in a nutshell of what's kind of going on be behind the scenes there. Um, and that really helped me. So hopefully that gives you kind of a better understanding of what is happening when you do this little drop down here. Then we also have percent, which is just the overall percentage of the cube. So that's just, you know, 5% of the corners. If I want to do, you know, like 50%, I'll just type in 50 look now it's almost a perfect uh, sphere here uh, but you know that's percent and then there's also absolute which I don't really know what the absolute um, parameter does uh, it seems very similar to offset uh, but it's very slightly different uh, but I don't really use it that much but um, it says the amount is absolute distance along adjacent edges so maybe if you're coming from another software that may be uh, more realistic to the type of bevel you may be used to. Uh, but for now, let's just keep it on offset, maybe five. And that is just kind of the super, super duper basics of the bevel modifier. There's so much more that we can do with this. And I love the bevel modifier. Um, if you've taken my tools class, you know that there is a tool over here called the bevel tool, uh, but it's, it's very destructive and you can't go back and rework your geometry sometimes. Sometimes you want to do it, sometimes you don't. Most of the time, the way I like to teach is to use the bevel modifier and that way you always have control over your design. So say if I go into edit mode, notice I still have my original geometry here. So if I take one of these points and click and drag, you know, I can still, you know, modify the original design and it keeps you just way more flexible. I can also always go back and change, you know, if I want them to be more smooth or less smooth, you know, you have a lot more control over your geometry. And, you know, say if you're like, oh, I don't really like the bevel anymore, you can just turn it off. Look, now you're back to normal. So it's way more flexible this way, but enough for me yammering on. 
let's get to making something that we can actually use. And I want to show you all the different uh, tricks and tips that you can use the uh, bevel modifier for. So let's go ahead and delete this cube. So I'm just going to go X and delete. And first things first, let's do flexible. And I'm going to bring in a reference image. So just go to your side or your right orthographic with numpad three. And we're going to do shift A and bring in an image. And we want to do a reference. And so I've got some reference images here. You can download these below. Um, so just bring in, let's just do the bottle uh, neck here with the cap. So we're going to load the reference image. And it's sideways, so let's rotate it on the, doo -doo -doo, maybe the X zero, nope. The Y 90 degrees, there we go. And so what we need to do is kind of scale this up to the real world dimensions. I made a note earlier, I measured the widest part of the bottle cap to the other side, and it was 28 millimeters. So sometimes what I like to do is just add a quick cube do mesh cube and let's just type in 28 millimeters and looky there it is way huge now something like that can be our bottle cap so if we take our empty go into see-through mode maybe even wireframe so we can see this bottle cap needs to be as large as this so you can as you can see it's very easy to lose track of scale inside of a 3d program so let's just take our empty we can call this bottle reference and we're just going to scale it up so just hit s and just scale it up and what we want is the edges of our bottle cap to bang into the sides here we'll just do scale it up scale it up g and z bring it down and maybe g and y and maybe scale it up just a little bit more so somewhere in there and take your time you know you just want the bottle cap to be uh, you know as real as possible so essentially that's our bottle cap right there and I'm gonna take my cap here and just scale it on the Z ever so slightly just like that maybe bring it up just a little bit so this is gonna be our cap just so we can kind of get a visual of uh, what's going on here and actually let's transform that so let's delete this cap um, it would make way better sense to use a actual cylinder. So we can do cylinder. And then for the radius, it's gonna be 28. So you can just do 28 divided by two. That'll give you the radius. And there we go. Hey, and it looks pretty good. So if we take our image, G and Z, from the widest point is right there. So that's good. Take our cylinder and just scale it on the Z just so it's about as thick as the bottle here doesn't have to be perfect but just kind of in the ballpark and there we go so now that's that's gonna be more realistic to our our cap here so I'm gonna go into solid view now we've got a real you know kind of like a digital version of our cap here and so the next thing we're gonna do is just draw a shape around this cap so it's pretty easy the only thing we really have to do and I want you to be as creative as you want here is you know just think all we really have to do is have some pressure up here at the top and some kind of pressure down here under the lip to kind of pop that top off um, so I'm gonna let you be as creative as you want but I'm just gonna kind of freestyle a random shape here and to do that I'm gonna go into my flexible design and then do shift a and I'm gonna add a cube uh, but we don't really need the cube. We just need this little um, kind of like object container, if you will. So watch what we do here. It's kind of confusing, but once you do it a few times, it will start to make more sense. Uh, if you go into edit mode, we've got all our points selected. So if you don't, just make sure you have, uh, you know, hit A to select all. And we're just going to hit X and delete all the vertices. So notice we still have the cube, but there's no geometry inside of the cube. It's kind of just like a a shell uh, waiting for some geometry. So we're gonna draw some geometry. So go to the side view um, or right orthographic with three and make sure you have your points or vertices mode selected. And you're going to hold control and right click to draw some shapes. And I want you to draw your own bottle opener or you can follow along with me if you'd like, uh, but I want you to you know, feel free to get creative as you want and make your own shape if you want to. So just put it right here in the middle 
and right above, you know, right in the center of the cap here, and maybe a little higher. And then I'm going to do Control right click. And notice a little tiny uh, vertice has appeared. And now we're just going to do the same thing Control right click, Control right click. And I want you to just create a little bottle opener that we can, uh, you know, use to open this bottle. And remember, we're going to use a penny right here in this little gap. So you want to make sure that your next line is somewhere in this ballpark, but not too close because the penny still has to get in here. So I'm going to do something maybe in here and then come around here. Somewhere in there. And then we'll kind of wrap around here. And then we can just kind of get close to this point right here. It doesn't have to be right on it, but just kind of click on there. And there we go. So now we've got a really basic, uh, weird shape uh, for our bottle opener here. Um, and what we need to do now is just kind of close the shape off. So just select these two, hit M, and we're going to merge at center. So there we go. And you can, you know, readjust that if you need to. And take the time just to kind of mess with any of the points that you want. You can even uh, select multiple points and go to edge and subdivide, you know, if you need another point there. And just kind of, you know, make your own bottle opener shape. Again, remember, we're going to have a uh, penny popping out right here. I may even move this one back a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty, pretty cool, pretty basic. Um, and so now what we're going to do is just extrude this out um, and create a bottle opener. So make sure you have everything selected and then just hit F. And there we go. We've got a little shape here. We can uh, go over to our layers here and rename it bottle opener. And there is our main bottle opener. And we can turn off our reference image for just a second. And now what we need to do is just kind of, you know, extend this out a little bit. So what you could do is just hit E and extrude and maybe do like, you know, just type in 22. That's pretty good. Um, so now we've got, you know, if our cap is 28, this is like 22. So I'm just, you know, you can kind of make it as wide as you want, but just remember the penny is about uh, 19 and a half millimeters. Um, we'll show you that in here in just a few. So we'll select all that and let's just center it up. So G and Y, actually G and X, and just kind of center it up right in there. That looks pretty good. So there we go. We've got the beginnings of a bottle opener, uh, but this could be way cooler. So now what we're going to do is go into object mode and add some bevels. So this is just a super simple, basic line drawing essentially that we've extruded out. But with the bevel modifier, we're going to make it look way cooler and way more professional. So let's just go ahead and add the modifier and we'll do bevel. And looky there, you can already see that the bevel has already started to make the, the edges a little softer, which is nice, but it could be way cooler than this. So again, you can do offset with depth percent or absolute, whichever you prefer. I'm just going to leave it on offset and just crank this up. Um, notice if we go too far, it will just stop. And that is because we have our, um, under the geometry tab here, we have clamp overlapped on, and I highly recommend leaving this on, but say if it ever gets turned off and you start seeing your geometry doing weird things like this, that is why you just want to make sure your clamp overlap is checked at all times, especially for 3d print design. It's just going to keep you from destroying your mesh essentially. So, you know, all you have to do here is just bevel out the edges to however much you like, and you can even increase the segments and segments are just going to give you like before, just more geometry to round out those corners. I'm going to do something like three, maybe even six, just to get it really, really curvy. So, just like that, it's already looking way cooler. Um, I'm going to go into EV mode and add a material just so this looks a little bit more cool. And there we go. We've got a really uh, simple bottle opener. Almost looks like a shark. Ooh, what if we did a shark? That could be really cool, actually. 
<laughs> I think that might be what it is. So, you know, feel free to let your creative juices flow. If you see something else, you know, you want to make a different animal or different shape or a different type of bottle opener, be my guest, be my guest. So, you know, there are no rules except for try stuff and, you know, figure it out. And so now we've got some bevel amounts that we can always adjust. We've got some segments and now we have limit method. So this is just going to limit the bevel method depending on which one you choose. So if you have it on none, it's just going to do what you see here. But if you switch it to angle, it's only going to bevel things that cross a certain angle and the angle amount is 30% and you can, you know, slide that however you want. Let's turn on some wireframe so it may be easier to see. Actually, it's kind of hard to see with this example. So let's go into our cap here and add a bevel modifier, you know, increase some of these and notice how, you know, we're getting all these segments on the side. We don't really need all that extra geometry. So that is where you could use the limit method angle and it will only do anything past that 30 degree angle. So notice if I crank it up now, we're not getting all that extra geometry for no reason. Um, it's actually just using uh, you know the edges here that are going past that 30 degree. So that's a, a what the angle method does. And then let's go back to our bottle opener. And so if we wanted to do weight, notice nothing happened. What is going on? That's because we have to essentially assign weights to each corner. So let me go into edit mode. So just click on your bottle opener, go into tab and go into edge mode. And once you select an edge, you can go to item. And if you don't see that, just hit in on your keyboard for the information panel. And inside of there, you'll see bevel weight. And notice this says weight and that says weight. So as you increase this, notice we get bevel weights. So say if you just wanted, you know, a bevel here and you wanted a bevel here, you can increase those. So if you just wanted a bevel weight on the, the, the nose there, you know, and kind of get creative. And that's why I love the bevel tool is because it just lets you be a lot more flexible with your bevels. So, you know, maybe if I want to bevel those. And again, the cool thing is that it's flexible. So, you know, if I wanted to come back here and change it, I can always make changes on the fly. So let's just crank that up. And then you can also do, um, vertex groups, which is kind of similar to weight, but um, is pretty powerful. So vertex groups, um, essentially you can like select vertexes, these little points, or you can select edges and uh, tell Blender you know, which edges or vertices you want to bevel. So let's say, for example, um, let's reset all these, these, uh, these bevels here just just for a few just to kind of show an example let's just crank these back down to zero so nothing is beveled right so what i want you to do is just select a few um a few edges you know maybe these maybe we want to bevel this one and maybe we want to bevel just this one so we've got you know a few edges selected and now what we can do is hit Control g and that will create a new vertex group. But what's happening behind the scenes is if you go to the little uh, properties panel here, it's the second one from the bottom. It looks like a little triangle with dots. If you click on that, there's a box right here that says vertex groups, and you could just simply hit plus and that will create that vertex group like that. So now we've got a vertex group, um, kind of like a folder. You could think of this as a folder and we can assign these selected uh, points or edges to this group by just hitting assign. And so there we go. We've now assigned our vertex group uh, to these points. And so now if we go into our modifier and go over and we switch this to vertex groups um, and then tell Blender which vertex group we want. So there's our group or our folder that we created. Boom. Looky there, it's only using the vertex group that we selected. So say if we were like, ah, I changed my mind, I don't really want this corner here. Then you could go back into your vertex groups, 
or into your points here, maybe selected this one, you know, just this one by himself and say remove. And you know, it'll just remove that or say, oh, I want these two. So let's, I'll just shift click on these and then assign, boom, there we go. So, so it gives you a lot of flexibility on which, uh, you know, edges that you want to have beveled. So maybe you just want this one, you know, assigned. So what I want you to do is just click around and practice assigning groups you can also erase your vertex groups with this little minus sign. What I like to do is just select some of these vertices right here, or these edges, and hit Control G. And that's a quick way to make a vertex group. So it did it all, you know, with just Control G. So that's what I found the other day, and I really have enjoyed that. Um, so now, if we turn the modifier back on, and we have our group, it's just those. So we're just kind of touching the surface on vertex groups, but they are incredibly powerful and super fun if you just need controlled uh, modifiers on you know specific parts of your geometry. Like here, say if I wanted here, I could just hit Command G and assign to the group. So say if we wanted to add these, we could shift click on these, hit Control G and set to the group we already created. And it's not showing up for some reason. So one thing you can do is deselect everything and hit select. So it will show you which lines you have selected. So there we go. So it's saying we have all of these. So we can just shift click these and just, you know, assign those. There we go. So now we've got what we want. And, you know, just go to town. Feel free to, you know, add little limit methods any way you want um, to your designs. I'm going to leave mine on vertex group. And now let's go ahead and take a little break. Uh, if you've made it this far, congratulations. We've still got a little bit more to go on the bevel modifier and we're gonna finish our bottle opener. So let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson.